Hello, today we're going to talk about nuclear equations. Now nuclear equations are kind of clear, short ways of showing what happens to a nucleus when a particular type of radiation is emitted. There's two kind of main rules to remember and it makes it a lot easier to keep track of what changes will happen um, for a given type of emission. And those two rules are that the total charges Are, are conserved. So when, as you read across a nuclear equation, if you add up all the nuclear charges at the start, they'll be the same as the sum of the nuclear charges at the end. Uh, as well as that, the total mass, the total mass is conserved as well. So again, if you add up all the atomic masses beforehand, they'll be the same as the sum of the atomic masses after. If that doesn't quite make sense yet, it will when you see a couple of examples. So let's start with alpha emission. So this is the event of an alpha particle being given off from a nucleus as it decays. So if we start with something like um, something with a mass of 238 and an atomic number of 92, which is uranium. So if we started with uranium 238 and it underwent alpha emission, well we then we write what ha what was there before, which is a nucleus of uranium. Then we put an arrow in, then we we would write both the alpha particle itself and whatever form of nucleus is left behind. Now in an exam question, they are very likely either to give you the name of the element formed or simply give you a large X for any element. But you will not be asked to work out what element is produced from alpha, beta, or gamma emission. Um, in this example, I'm going to show you the element, but in, in, in an exam question, they would probably just give you X as a symbol. So what's going to form is going to have, let's, let's draw the alpha particle first, and it'll make a lot more sense. So there's going to be something plus an alpha particle. Now we use the Greek letter alpha for an alpha particle. And as we mentioned before, it contain, contains two neutrons and two protons. So therefore, it's going to have a mass of four. It's going to have a, an, an atomic number of two. Um, so that's our alpha particle. Now, if we look before and after, before we had a mass of 238. And afterward, we have a mass of four in the alpha particle and something else. So what plus four makes 238? 234. And then we can think the same for the bottom row. What beforehand we have 92 as an atomic number, 92 protons, and afterward two of those protons are in the alpha particle, so what remains? Well, 90. And in this case, that forms thorium. Okay, so this is alpha emission. And as a general rule, if you take um, if you take A to be the nucleus you start with, the element you start with, then as a general rule, what you have, if we have A with an atomic mass and atomic number, then you end up with mass minus four and number minus two, and that's your product, your product species or your uh, element that gets produced plus a 4, 2, alpha. This is just a general way of writing what happened above. So let's have a look at beta emission. Now for beta emission, this time we're going to start with cesium. So here's our cesium, has a mass of 137 and it has an atomic number of 55. Again we draw our arrow, so before anything happens we have a, an atom of cesium cesium nucleus, untouched, but unstable. As it undergoes radioactive decay, it emits a, a beta particle. So a beta particle has effectively zero mass, and it has a charge of minus one, just like any other electron. So what is left behind? Well, we said before that the total mass on this side is going to equal the total mass on this side. So what plus, a, plus zero makes 137? So that gives us 137. And what plus minus one makes 55? Well, that's going to be 56. That's one way to work it out. And this particular element is barium. Uh, 
That's one way to work it out using those cons uh, conserved charge and conserved mass rules, but it's important to know what's actually happening here. So when an beta, when a beta particle is emitted, we've already said that beta particles do not come from the shells, they come from the nucleus. And in fact, what's happening is one of the neutrons in the nucleus is undergoing a change. It is emitting, it's going to emit a beta particle and with a, a mass of zero and a charge of minus one. And as it does so, it becomes a proton. And that proton has, will have the same mass of one, but a charge of plus one. Whereas the neutron obviously had a mass of one and a charge of zero. Can you see how these two numbers here added together give you the zero for charge, plus one and minus one? And these two mass numbers here, zero and one, added together give you the mass number of the neutron. So one of the neutrons changes to a proton. And in doing so, the atomic number goes up by one because there's one extra proton. And the beta particle is emitted and the mass of the nucleus does not change because uh, one of those neutrons has turned into a proton. Both of them have the same mass. Last but not least, we have gamma emission. Now with gamma emission, this is frequently uh, occurs alongside either alpha emission or beta emission. So if we start with nickel, here's the atomic number and atomic mass. Now, in this case, nickel is probably the product of either alpha emission and beta emission. And at this point, it is is not very stable. It's going to be a quite a high energy state. To become more stable, it can emit an, uh, a gamma ray. So if it emits a gamma ray, then we draw a symbol for gamma. Gamma has a mass of zero, and it has a charge of zero. Now you may already be thinking, based on our the two conservation rules we were talking about, well, what plus zero is going to be 60? You're right, it's going to be 60. And what plus 28, uh, sorry, what plus zero makes 28? Yeah, 28. So the identity of the nucleus doesn't change when it emits gamma radiation, but it does become a, a lower energy state. It becomes more stable in doing so. So that last one there is gamma emission. It's, you're be, it is unlikely that you will come across an exam question that asks you to complete one of these equations because, well, as you can see, they're just so easy. Um, the alpha and the beta emission are much more commonly found in exams as exam questions, uh, usually incomplete, so that you have to finish working out the mass or the, the atomic number of either the product uh, element or the uh, form of radiation that is produced. Well, I hope that's been helpful. If you have any questions or comments, then you can leave them in the comments section or pop and see me uh, in school on Tuesday or another day of the week, depending on what class you're in. <laughs> Good night.